Hey, Tom. Hey, how you doing? What are you doing here in Huachan Bay? Oh, I'm just watching the drones fly by. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions? Sure, why not? So, when was the first time you visited this place? First time I visited was 2009. Uh, what was it like then? So back then, it was not like this at all. It was mostly back alleys and small streets. Uh, when you went into places, there were little booths, and you really kind of had to be an expert in electronics to make it happen. So how many times have you been back since 2009? Uh, like I say, I think probably about four or five times I've been back since 2009. And what brings you back currently? What are you working on? I'm working on a wall sconce that's also an hourglass. Do you mind kind of explaining that more? What sure, that like? so basically it's going to be shaped kind of like a very long hourglass, and there's a strip of LEDs down the center of it, and each second that goes by, it gets a little dimmer until the end of the minute, and each minute is lit up as one bright spot, so you've got zero one one at the top of the clock and 60 at the bottom of it. And does this clock have a name yet? Nope. Okay, well I'm guessing this clock will need a lot of components, am I right? Not really, it's just going to need some addressable uh, LEDs and a microcontroller and power. Well, luckily we're in the right place for that. You want to go look for some parts? Let's go see if we can do some shopping. So I heard you were a theater major in college, is that true? Yeah. So in that time, did you have a favorite play or musical? Yeah, my favorite play is uh, Beckett's Craft's Last Tape. Favorite musical? Let's go with Hamilton for now. So what is a question that you wish your students would ask more often? why as in why am I making this thing or why am I gonna make the world a better place by making this device that I'm making so definitely that's a great question to ask so do you think we can play upon some of that theater experience that you had there's a piano right next to you you want to play a tune I can't play a tune but I'll make something up thank you that was great Okay, so what do you think is an advantage of the open source, um, open source software, open source hardware? The advantage of open source is really that you can learn from other people's lessons, learn what they mis what mistakes they made, uh, how to improve things. Do you think there's a relationship between uh, open source and Shanjai Electronics? Yeah, I think both of them are their own communities of practice. I think both of them, uh, both of them have rules for how they share information, what can be shared and what can't. I think um, both of them um, are a little misunderstood by communities outside of them. And um, I think both of them are really about innovation ultimately in their own way. So random question, what phone do you have in your pocket right now? Um, a Pixel, first version. Where'd you get it? Uh, it was given to me by work. So online or brick and mortar? Brick and mortar. Okay, well, do you have a favorite mobile app that you use the most? <laughs> well, the one I use the most is probably Gmail, but the one that I enjoy the most is probably Instagram. Oh, that's awesome. Can I follow you? What's your handle? Uh, nope. Oh, wow, rejected. Okay, that's fine. Um, so then what do you think the next step for open source hardware is? Where do you see it going? I'd say the next step for open source hardware is that open source hardware companies have to figure out how to balance putting the material out there openly with being able to actually sell product. Uh, they got to find out what the perfect timing of that is. So quick technical question. I've been trying to get these LEDs to light up and I'm really struggling. Do you mind telling me what's wrong? Sure. There's no power source. Oh, well, yeah, I guess that's obvious. Maybe we should take Interaction Lab again. Um, well, in this case, what is your advice for learning something new? What do you do? Pick the simplest possible project that you're interested in and do that. Because if you do that, then you can actually learn from it, no matter what the platform is, and you'll get better as you go. So do we have all the parts that we need for this project you're working on now? We still have to do some shopping, right? Nope. What do we need so far? Well, we need some LEDs, and uh, we still need some power. Oh, so we really haven't gotten anything yet, huh? I'm nope. jabbing away. Okay, we better go find them. Let's go upstairs. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, let's go upstairs. Maybe on the up, up escalator. <laughs> well, hey, I'm glad you made it up the escalator, all right. <laughs> so I'm too. thinking that you still need to buy stuff for your products, but we just 
happen to land on the computer floor, so I don't know how useful it will be to buy what you need around here. Yeah, it's true. This floor used to have more components on it than it does now. So you want to talk a little bit about how Huachang Bay, Huachang Bay has changed um, since you first came. What did this kind of floor used to look like? So you'd probably see less consumer goods like this and you'd see more individual components back when the first time I came. Okay, so along the lines of computers, Mac or PC? Mac. What's the tech buzzword you wish people would stop using? Speculative. Do you remember your first memory with a computer? Yep, it was a TRS-80 Model 1, and I remember running the little basic program that had a person walking across the screen. It was the coolest think, thing ever. Do you think we can find some of the components to that around here? Not in this century, we can't. Okay, so, <laughs> well, well, yeah. Um, what is the most exciting hardware product you've seen in the market? Uh, the e-paper screens that do nothing but let you draw on them and then erase because that's they do one function and they do it well. That's true, they're great, and only 45 Kwai. What hardware product have you only seen in Shenzhen? What's unique to Shenzhen? Uh, probably the fidget spinner phones. Oh, wow, uh, where did you find those? I haven't seen them uh, in a little while. We, I, I forget which store we were in where we saw them. Okay, so can I get your prediction about what this place will look like in 10 years? Yeah, I think more and more of the consumer stuff will rise from the first floor all the way up the floors and the component sellers will be moving further and further out. And where will the component sellers go? I think they'll probably move further out of the center of Shenzhen into cheaper real estate, probably further up uh, into the suburbs. I guess that's where we need to go to find these components. Oh, hey, look, Bitcoin miners. Oh, oh yeah, sure enough. It's <laughs> last week's uh, greatest thing. <laughs> well, I guess in that vein, I'm kind of hungry. Want to grab some food before we continue our component searching? Yeah, let's do that.